Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Monday Morning Mojo. I'm Anna Gibbs, and it's always so great to start the week with you. And it's funny, what do we usually say to people on a Monday morning? How was your weekend? So I'm going to ask you, how was your weekend? Did you have any fun this past weekend? That is the topic of our conversation this week. I want to talk to you about bringing in the fun and understanding how finding more fun is really the key to being more successful. I think that our society does place a lot of emphasis on the importance of working hard. We talk about ways to be successful and increasing our productivity. We talk about it here on a Monday Morning Mojo too, right? We want to look at how we can live our best life. And I think the harder that we work or the more that we embrace the hustle, right? A culture of hustling. We have to make sure that we are not getting sucked into this mindset that it's all work and no play. And I think that it's important to use our time wisely. It's important to always put our best uh, efforts forward. We want to definitely improve our skills. We want to really achieve great things and work hard. But I think that when we do, we should also play hard. This is my mantra in life. This is one of the things that I really am very intentional about. So I'm excited to talk to you about this today. I think that the message is that having fun and truly experiencing more joy in your life is just as important as being productive. I'm going to say that again, that having fun and, and really experiencing pleasure and joy and creating great experiences is just as important as finding ways to be more productive in your work and in your business. Because if we don't take the time to relax, if we don't take the time to have some fun, basically release the steam valve, as I like to say, then we just continue to work at such a high level and at such a fast pace it's inevitable that we build up stress, right? And the more stress that we build up, we're gonna lead ourselves into burnout. We've talked about that. And I think that we really then risk the very things that we're working so hard for, like productivity and efficiency and effectiveness. So we have to know that scheduling time to have fun is not a guilty pleasure. And we have to know that it's truly the key to working and succeeding at a high level. I think the harder we work, the harder we should play. And listen, having fun has definite positive biological effects, right? We know that when we engage in pleasurable activities, it can release dopamine in our brain. And dopamine certainly can lead to having more positive thoughts and more positive thoughts are going to lead to more creative thoughts and obviously offset to feelings of stress, feelings of anxiety. And so this is a really important conversation and I'm glad that we're going to have it today on a Monday morning. I think that it is really about being intentional around finding more joy and having more fun. Because I think when we live a busy and demanding life, we crave more fun and we crave also human connection. And so this is about creating time for you to really get into the activities that bring you joy, the things that you like to do, things that you want to do more of and things that make you feel good. Right. So in doing that, you also have to ask yourself, who do I want to do it with? So if you can also create activities with other people that you enjoy being around, things that you all find in common, then that can really raise the happiness quotient. And again, I think happiness leads to success. So there's a lot of pressure around us and there's a lot of ways that we are giving all day long. And I think that building in those experiences for us to have fun and for us to connect with other people creates balance. And at the end of the day, we need to get real about this because there is a difference in the way we spend our time. For instance, you want to really create space for true fun and for you to really enjoy maybe getting out into the outdoors, spending time with people that really change your energy, change your vibe, 
and create flow in your life. Because there are a lot of things that you might put time into that you think are fun, and it could be fake fun. <laughs> uh, that's going to be the new term of the week, right? Fake fun. What do I mean by fake fun? Like, for instance, look, we all need a little downtime sometimes. Uh, maybe we scroll through social media. Maybe we play a game for a few minutes, stuff like that. Maybe there's a show we like to watch that's just mindless on Netflix. I get all that. I I'm guilty of it too. But I think we have to manage that and realize that might be a mental break. It might be an emotional release. But is it truly the fun that I'm talking about today? Is it really about creating time to have these really great experiences and maybe adventures, right? For you to be able to choose the things that really will bring you joy. So whether it's hiking, whether it's having dinner with a friend, whether it's going out on a date with your partner, whatever it might be, I think that we have to get real about how it's really about connecting with others and connecting with nature. Because if we're connecting with technology, the pattern is not really broken from our daily activities, right? When we're working, we're constantly using technology. We're online, we're on Zoom calls, we're on the phone, we're using different platforms for communication, for marketing. And so when we choose to stay in this technology space and think that's a way for our brain to have a break and get into some fun, it's, that's why I call it fake fun. I think that what I'm talking about is finding fun in getting outside of your daily routine. Maybe getting outside of your office, getting outside of your house, getting into nature, right? And whether it's planned or spontaneous, it's really about just knowing that you have to make time for it because you're going to work yourself into a place of such high stress that you wind up being ineffective. So how can you bring more fun into what you're doing every day? And I think that getting into a way of thinking in terms of fun magnets, perhaps, that just came to me. What could you do to attract more enjoyable experiences into your life? So let me give you a couple of things to think about, right? Fun is a universal term. But I think we have to also get clear that we define fun differently. And I'm not trying to judge those of you who think it's fun to just sit and binge something on TV. <laughs> I'm not judging you for that. But I'm just encouraging you maybe to expand your definition of fun. While it is definitely a unique definition for each one of us, could you try like today, maybe even right now if possible, if you're driving, don't do this right now, but do it later. But just sit down for a few minutes at some point and identify a couple of things that you've done in your life where you remember really having a great time. Like you really had fun, right? Think of some times when you laughed. Think of some times when you were really engaged, really engrossed in the experience. Maybe it was because it was a beautiful landscape. You were outdoors somewhere. Maybe you were on vacation. Maybe you were doing something athletic or active out in nature. Who were you with? What were you doing? So think about a few times that you really had fun and get as detailed in the memory as possible and get clear about what you were doing and who you were with and what made the experience feel so good. And it doesn't have to be a week-long vacation or a full day outing. Maybe it's just a couple of minutes. This, this experience that you had didn't necessarily take a lot of your time. So small moments can count really big in this conversation, right? So it's just really getting connected with that feeling. So for instance, it could have been just a memory of you walking on the beach. It could have been a memory of you playing in the yard with your kids. It could have been something about a conversation with a friend where you just laughed so hard you cried. So once you get clear about the things that bring you joy, then you can create a magnet to attract more of that in your life. Because as you identify activities, settings, people that generate fun for you, it's easy to repeat it. So whether it's rock climbing, whether it's parasailing, whether it's spending an afternoon at the winery, 
whatever it is, you've identified things that you're attracted to. You identify ways to create magnets to bring more fun into your life. And then as you become clearer about the things that you want to enjoy more of, can you put it on your calendar? Is it okay for you to plan to have some fun? Because we sometimes think that life should be more spontaneous and that we shouldn't plan everything. And, and yes, there are probably arguments on both sides of this. There are people who really crave spontaneity and feel like, oh, if I plan every second of every day, I'm losing something in the process. I think there's a way to have a little bit of both. And honestly, if this conversation is important to you, if you are tracking with me this morning about why this is so important for you to be intentional about having some more fun, then you would agree that it's probably a priority. So things that are priorities need to be planned for. And time blocking for it just means that you identify this as a priority and you want to protect time so be able to get into it. I think that once you've identified things that you want to experience more, people you want to hang out with more, things that you want to do that bring that happiness and joy into your life, that fun, then you should schedule it. You should make a plan to have it. I think it's okay not to be spontaneous and sometimes just create the priority and put it on your calendar. We have to take control or take responsibility for the things that we want to do in our lives. And it shouldn't just be on a professional level or it's easy for a lot of you to make time to give to other people. Right, I know many of you who are listening are givers and we love you for that. You support us and take care of us and you nurture us, but if you wanna give more to other people, then you have to recognize that putting some time on your calendar for yourself to just, I guess, unplug and relax and enjoy yourself is important if you wanna be able to give more, right? So prioritizing fun might seem a little weird Maybe even be a little challenging for some of you at first, but oh my gosh, my loves, it's so worth it, right? Because here's what I need you to understand. If you take one thing away from this conversation today, it's that our lives are defined by what we choose to put meaning to. Our lives are defined by what we choose to pay attention to. And so you have to have the ability to pay attention to this, to having fun. Pay attention to the energy that it produces for you because it enriches your life and will make you feel better. And I think when you feel better, you can do better. So if having fun is sitting on a bench somewhere talking to your grandchild, then do it. Spend some time doing that. And with the way our lives are moving so quickly and sometimes at a frenzied pace, if we don't carve the time out for it, will it really happen? So I think we have to recognize that uh, we have to take the time to breathe more and to enjoy our life so that we can really look back on our lives and say, wow, I have so many meaningful memories. I have no regrets about who I spent time with. I really got clarity around the things that were important to me and I made time for it. And so that you can be able to offset any feelings of stress or anxiety or overwhelm and avoid burnout because you're making your leisure time a priority. And let me jump into that for a minute because I almost hesitated calling it leisure time because we can be very leisurely and yet may not actually be having enough fun. So you might have some downtime, but I'm talking about also being intentional about just creating experiences and creating joy through activities, right? And so definitely another way you can improve your relationships is by finding ways to connect and have fun together. Who doesn't wanna have fun? And I think that at the end of the day, it's about making this a habit, right? We've heard about the happiness habits and success habits. What about a fun habit? What about creating habits around this so that it's not something that happens periodically, but it's something that happens regularly so that we can incorporate playtime into our regular everyday time daily or weekly, right? So that you can have better relationships at work and in life because 
you're incorporating more fun into the relationship. You are finding ways to grow personally and professionally because having more fun changes the chemical makeup in our brain. And who knows, maybe it even makes us smarter. <laughs> we know that having more fun will reduce stress because it's going to impact our home hormone levels, especially if you finding that you're having more fun doing something physical, right? Whether it's a walk or hiking, different things that we talked about already. At the end of the day, could this increase our energy, which might actually make us even feel more youthful in the process? How will you incorporate more fun into your life when you realize that you're working at a high level, you're giving at a high level, you're supporting your family, maybe you're taking care of an elderly parent, maybe you are involved in a lot of things in your community, maybe you're involved with a board or the PTO or whatever, and you have all these things that demand your time, demand your energy, demand brain power, and all work and no play can really lead us down a path of feeling stressed, anxious, diseased. And so my message for you today is right now to figure out what brings you more joy and not feel bad about incorporating more of that into your life. And for you to understand that you putting yourself first will actually help you to serve other people. So if there was a way to get your mojo back, this is it, my friends. This is the way to do it. A way for you to get your mojo back is to put the fun first. And certainly that doesn't mean that you're going to quit your job and just surf in Hawaii for the rest of your life. It, mean, <laughs> it just means that you're also not going to feel guilty because you want to do something for yourself and you want to do something that you enjoy. I trust you got something inspiring out of today's message, and I look forward to hearing from you, whether you want to share your thoughts on our Monday Morning Mojo Facebook page, whether you want to reach out to me directly, let me know how this has inspired you to take a look at some of the areas in your life that you need to put more focus on and where you decided to attract more fun into your life and where you've made some changes so that you can really, I think, take deeper breaths and have less stress. So if you found this to be inspiring, I hope that you can share this message with someone today and create a great impact in their life too. As always, thanks for joining me and I look forward to seeing you on another Monday Morning Mojo.